So, you're about to start the narrative project. Right now, you're probably staring down the massive peak you're about to try and conquer, thinking, how in the absolute hell am I going to pull this off? In October of 2017, I was listening to Mr. T talk about lighting, screenplay, shot lists, and audio, thinking the exact same thing. Three months after that, somehow, I did it. Josue and I made prose. You might have heard of it. Looking back on it, I remember there being quite a bit of unforeseen challenges, not just for Josue and I, but for other partnerships as well. Problems similar to the ones you will inevitably face. The success of the films depended on how the partners responded to these challenges. What got us through was our dedication to the project and a determination to complete the film we had envisioned in time for exhibition. That and a few other things. Here are the few other things. The first thing I will say is this. The pre-production portion of the project cannot be half-assed. We owe a lot of the success of our film to the story, the people who chose to act for us, and the careful planning we did before picking up a camera. This part of production is important because you will either be setting yourself up for success or for failure. It's what your project will build off of. Like everyone else, Josue and I went through the whole screenwriting process, but when those few weeks were up, we still weren't completely happy with our screenplay. At this point in the process, our two main characters, the robbers, weren't incompetent, they were just down on their luck. They didn't stumble upon the idea of stealing something to win approval from their boss, they actually planned the heist to spite him. The boss's character behavior wasn't all that believable in the context of the film, and in the end, Gary and Kevin took over the company. The plot was clunky, the jokes missed the mark, and the ending wasn't satisfying. So, in the following two weeks, while most people were getting green lit, Prose was completely written and rewritten about seven times. And it paid off. My advice here is this. Don't neglect the screenplay. The story, being the base of the movie, has to work, because if it doesn't, it kills the film, regardless of how beautiful it's shot. And yes, technically this will put you off schedule, but honestly the only real deadline is exhibition. The amount of time you devote to every fraction of the project from now until then can be decided by you. Assuming you get organized and plan out your shooting schedule, according to your own schedules and those of your actors, spending a little extra time on your screenplay will help you. When picking actors, put effort into finding the person that can best play the role. Don't just cast your best friend or parents because it's convenient. I mean, if it works for the characters, by all means. Just don't be lazy about it. After having finished the film, one of the questions I got most often was, who are your actors and where did you find them? Gary is my sister's friend's dad. Kevin is my friend's boyfriend's dad. When looking for actors, I asked my parents, my friends, my freestyle teachers, if they knew someone who would fit the parts I described or would like to act. I got their contact info and shot them an email introducing myself and the project. I wrote out the logline, briefly went through the commitments they would need to make, and attached the links to my best film work. You might be surprised by who says yes to you. From those who say yes, Plan to get together and read through the script so you can get an idea if they're the right fit. Also, before you make your final choice in actors, get their schedules. This one's super important. Match it against all you need to shoot. Does it work? Will you have time? With the screenplay and prospective actors, you're ready to start making schedules. The goal is to be as efficient as possible. This was crucial for us, and it will be for you too, especially if your film involves many people and locations. We had five locations written out in the script, and ten speaking parts, not including extras. It matters even more if you have restrictions as to when and for how long those people or places are available. Shoot all the scenes with the same actors in the same locations at the same time. Also, if your actors are people with very busy schedules, consider planning the day out to the hour, and tell them to be there for a specific slot of time. But where your schedules will likely change as the process goes on, and be prepared to readjust for problems that may come up. Now, even with all that planning, production rarely goes completely as planned. Surviving so, mean, this stage is all about flexibility, creativity, and quick thinking. 
In the spirit of being as prepared as possible, contact your actors to tell them what to wear and what section of the screenplay they read over before their next shoot. Make a separate schedule for each day of shooting beforehand. What props do you need? How many crewmen do you need? Account for setup time and have your props ready to go the night before. Don't scramble and visit every single target within 10 miles in search of one fluffy piggy bank hours before your shoot like we did. Trust me, you'll thank yourself. If things go wrong, try not to call it a day and just think you'll be able to film it later because more problems will come up and you will run out of time. We ended up reworking our schedule and shooting part of another scene that day, the scene that required the same outfits and props that we had with us. Sometimes one of your actors will go on vacation for two weeks when you need them for filming. Sometimes, at the last minute, a location will back out on letting you film there altogether after slowly restricting the time and areas it offered originally. More on that one in a second. Point is, things will go wrong. It's up to you to act accordingly. Next, and this one should go without saying, get the shot. Coach your actors, demonstrate and explain what you want them to do, direct them. You will be rewarded for your creativity and also for taking risks. Just make sure you're always careful. Still, you know, get the shot. All right, we do this. We're going to be staying at the boss of trip. The boss will have to let us keep our jobs. This has got the address, it's got the ins and outs, everything. If we do this, we have to do this, right? Yes. Throughout the whole process, your classmates, family, friends, and teachers will all be great resources. When we couldn't find actors, Mr. T suggested people he knew. When we lost access to that large two-story house as required from our screenplay, my mom made an announcement at the Los Altos Rotary Club meeting and asked her fellow members if they'd be willing to offer up a house with a similar description. Luckily, someone said yes. In the end, we shot the majority of our film at all-day shoots during the two weekends leading up to exhibition leaving us with one week to edit. All hands on deck. If you need music, I recommend Marmoset for sound effects, use free sound. The film room gets packed when it gets that close to exhibition, so don't rely on being able to edit your whole film at one time in the day. All throughout the week of exhibition, Josue and I edited during lunch, class, and after school until 2.30 in the morning, which was made possible by Mr. Taylor. Thursday night, we stayed until 4.30 a.m., went home, came back, Continued editing from second period all the way until one hour before exhibition began. And we broke your record. We only have an hour. Guess what like time it is? An hour. <laughs> we currently hold the record of staying latest at school to edit, or I guess earliest, and the closest export time to exhibition. Needless to say, we slept like babies once it was over. Overall, the overarching piece of advice I can give you is this. The thing about this beast of a project is that it demands that you devote nearly all of your attention and effort to it, or it won't work for you. So, if you don't cry at some point in this process, you're not doing it right. If you aren't sleep deprived, you aren't doing it right. If you maybe sometimes, maybe always, blow off work for other classes so you can do film work, you're not doing it right. If you aren't enjoying it, you definitely aren't doing it right. Though it's probably the hardest project you'll ever attempt in high school, it's also probably the most rewarding. So have fun with it. Good luck.